It looks like foil. It crinkles like plastic, and it feels almost weightless in your hands. But Mylar is more than just a survival gimmick. It's an engineering marvel. Underneath that reflective surface lies a high-tech plastic that's been stretched, strengthened, and coated in metal at the atomic level. That's what makes it tough, heat-reflective, and so unbelievably thin. So, what's actually inside this shimmering sheet? Let's start with the foundation. This is a plastic called polyethylene terephthalate, or PET. You've seen PET before. Your water bottle is made of it, your food packaging, even synthetic clothing like fleece. But Mylar isn't just any PET. It's engineered. It all begins with two raw materials, ethylene glycol, a clear syrupy liquid often used in antifreeze, and terephthalic acid, a white crystalline powder derived from petroleum. These two chemicals are mixed and heated in a process called polycondensation, where they react and fuse into long molecular chains. The result? A molten polymer, thick, viscous, and ready to be transformed. While still hot, this PET is shaped into a thin sheet. But here's the trick. At this stage, it's still weak and flexible, more like a sandwich bag than a high-strength survival tool. To make it tough, the sheet is rapidly stretched in two directions at once, a process called biaxial orientation. Think of it like rolling out pizza dough, but in both length and width at the same time. This stretching rearranges the molecular structure, aligning the chains so they interlock like woven fabric. The result? A film that's incredibly strong, resistant to tearing, and stable under extreme temperatures. Unlike ordinary plastic, which can shrink, deform, or crack in the cold, mylar stays tough. But strength alone isn't enough. To make it a true heat shield, we need metal. And that's where the magic of vapor deposition comes in. If you wanted to cover plastic and metal, your first thought might be glue or lamination. But a mylar blanket isn't just coated in aluminum. It's fused with it at the atomic level. That's why it's so thin, so smooth, and so effective at reflecting heat. The process starts with a vacuum, a chamber where nearly all the air is sucked out. Why? Because aluminum, like all metals, has an incredibly high boiling point. Under normal conditions, it would need to be heated past 2470 degrees Celsius, 4478 degrees Fahrenheit, to turn into a gas. That's hotter than molten lava. But in a vacuum, something strange happens. There's no air pressure pushing down on the metal, so it boils at a much lower temperature. The roll of mylar film is loaded into a vacuum chamber where the aluminum coating process takes place. Inside the chamber, aluminum targets are heated or sputtered, transforming into a fine mist, a cloud of vaporized metal. As the mylar film moves rapidly on a conveyor or is unrolled, this vapor spreads evenly across its surface. The vacuum environment prevents heat buildup, keeping the film cool despite the extreme temperature of the aluminum. As the vapor lands, it instantly condenses into a layer just a few atoms thick, too thin to affect the plastic. This precise process gives mylar its reflective surface without melting or deforming. Many mylar blankets have two sides, a silver side and a gold, red, or camo side. The silver is the raw aluminum-coated PET film, reflecting up to 97% of infrared radiation to retain heat. The gold side comes from a thin polymer dye layer, improving visibility. Gold and red stand out in rescue situations, while camo helps with stealth. Despite the color differences, heat reflection remains nearly the same. The thin aluminum layer is highly reflective, but also very fragile and would easily be damaged. To prevent this, manufacturers laminate a thin layer of polyethylene, a lightweight and flexible plastic, over the aluminum. But despite its microscopic size, this metallic layer has an enormous impact. It makes mylar a heat-reflecting powerhouse. Aluminum isn't just a metal. It's a thermal mirror, reflecting infrared radiation and slowing heat loss. But a mylar blanket doesn't insulate like a down jacket. It simply bounces back some body heat. Without insulation underneath, heat still escapes, and condensation inside can make you colder. That's why mylar blankets should be used with insulating layers, not instead of them. They're a last resort, not a magic heat source. Used correctly, they help retain warmth, but misused, they can leave you dangerously exposed. But let's wrap up. A thin sheet of biaxially stretched PET 
reinforced with an ultra-thin layer of aluminum, transforms into a survival tool that fits in your pocket. Lightweight, reflective, and deceptively simple, yet packed with material science at its finest. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the science behind Mylar blankets, don't forget to give this podcast a thumbs up, follow for more material science breakdowns, and share it with fellow outdoor enthusiasts. Stay curious and see you next time.